It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Air Force men's assistant water polo coach, Rick McKee. How are you doing today? I'm well, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to be a college coach? That's a great question. Um, After the Rio Olympics, I was pretty finished with water polo. So, um, I honestly didn't want to see another water polo ball in a pool again. Um, Ryan Brown came out here uh, in 2009 or 10, something like that. Ryan's a really good friend of mine. And he approached me in February of 2018 about coming out here and, and being his assistant. Um, at the time, I was right in the middle of a commitment to develop some leadership at a church that I um, was attending. And... Uh, in the process of that, I told Ryan that I didn't feel comfortable about leaving that position right in the middle of it. So he promised that he'd come back and revisit, um, revisit the whole thing again in six months, which he did. It was awesome. Um, he actually did a really smart thing and he had his wife and my wife get together and, um, she sold my wife a little bit more on it. I think I was already, um, um, I, I think I'd already made up my mind to do it. So, I um, mean, coming out here, it was pretty much a no-brainer for me. Um, I really love the Colorado Springs area. I'm pretty familiar with it because of the time that I spent with U.S. Water Polo. We had come out here to the training center. Um, also, my eldest daughter, her family, my son-in-law was stationed out at Peterson, which is right here in Colorado Springs. And um, so we'd come out here and visit them. So it, it wasn't it wasn't a hard sell for me at all. My wife growing up in Southern California and stuff, it was a little bit more for her just because of the snow and you know the potential of being cold Um, but she loves it out here so um it wasn't a hard thing honestly to get me back into it um being out here has really kind of rejuvenated me as far as uh the coaching and being involved in water polo what was it like obviously being official for the u.s water polo um refereeing was a, a Thing that I kind of took up as a challenge. I was uh, coaching at Tustin High School in Southern California, and one of the other coaches there kind of challenged me to become a, an official, which I did. And uh, in doing that, it actually enhanced my coaching ability because I, was, I learned the rules and kind of got to see some different strategies and stuff as I was officiating. Of course, what was it like coaching the U.S. national team for water polo? Um, that period of time was such a blessing. Uh, it was, you know, almost 10 years of, of being involved on that, on the coaching staff with U.S. Water Polo. Um, getting to see a great deal of the world, um, interacting with the lead athletes. And it just wasn't just water polo. It, um, there were swimmers. I got to uh, meet Michael Phelps and some of the other guys uh, that were on the swim team. Um, going in and seeing the, the basketball, USA men's basketball was really kind of a neat thing. Um, so all in all, I mean, just globally, it was a really great experience. Um, you know, it's the pinnacle, right, of water polo. There's nothing higher because there's no professional water polo here in the United States. So it was really a, a true blessing to be able to be involved in all of that. What was that feeling like of obviously getting to meet Michael Phelps and be on the same stage as him? That was pretty cool. I mean, there's no denying that at all. Um, I always try to keep it, keep it in perspective, though, just because, hey, Michael Phelps is Michael Phelps. Um, uh, being in, in 2008, we got to go and practice with the men's basketball team. We, our training facility at Beijing Normal University um, was – in a basement pool. And so we'd have to walk up the stairs and walk by the basketball gym every day. And finally, one day the basketball team invited us to come in and play. I think a couple of the guys played force with uh, like Kobe and, and uh, a couple of those other guys. So it was really, it's very surreal in many ways, 
But, um, you know, again, part of that big blessing that, that I was able to, to, to be afforded, you know, and all of that. What was the feeling like of going to the Olympics three times? Mm. Uh, each Olympics is a little bit different. Uh, I thought by go in going to the Beijing Olympics, I thought it'd be really kind of uh, just because it's China. Um, and we are taught here in America a certain way to look at the world. Uh, by being able to go and participate in the Beijing Olympics, it really opened up on my, my eyes and my mind to a, a completely different world over there. The Chinese people are incredibly friendly. Um, so it was really kind of a neat experience over there. Um, I like to go out and whenever I went to a different country, I, I kind of took a day or two when we had an off day just to kind of go out on my own and explore and kind of throw myself into the culture a little bit. And uh, that was really kind of a neat thing in, in Beijing. In London, it was uh, very Western. You had to walk actually through a mall to get to the front gates of the Olympic Park where all the venues were. And so it was very Western, very um, um, kind of materialistic, you know, in that way. Uh, but well put on, a fantastic Olympic experience. Uh, Rio was was different. Um, we were there in Rio in 2007 as part of the Pan American Games, and um, we knew that they were getting ready to put the bid in for that Olympic, and we thought that there was no way that Rio was going to get the award, but um, they did, and they did a good job, and they had, had its challenges. Everything you heard on the media was true about the Olympic Village and um, some of the toilets backing up, you know, and that kind of thing, but it was special. And so I think all three of them being very different, but very, very special um, experiences that, that um, I was afforded. What was it like, obviously, having three Pan American Games and six World Championships under your belt? Uh, um, the Pan American Games are special because it's just the Americas, right? It's Canada all the way through Argentina um, participating. And so some of those countries that wouldn't or didn't qualify to go to the Olympics were there. Um, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed, especially about the Pan American Games, was just going into the, the cafeteria where the, they had all the meals set up. And you get to sit down with people who, you know, we're told are, are enemies kind of, you know, in Cuba or um, Venezuela. And sports has always had this special connection with each other. And so I would be able to sit down with, with the contingency from Cuba or Venezuela or any other part of the country for that, or the, the, um, the continent for that matter, and just kind of make friends with those people. Um, the world championships are a little bit different just because they happen a little more frequently. And um, uh, different sports, you know, it's all aquatics at the world championships. And so that's where I got an opportunity to kind of meet Michael Phelps and some of the swimmers. Um, you get to meet some of the synchronized swimmers and get to go to their events every, you know, once in a while when you have the time to be able to do it. Um, diving, you know, is a really cool event to go watch. And so, you know, every one of them have a little different um, um, uh, events and, and spectator kind of things. So, you know, at the Olympics, you get to go watch basketball, for instance. Um, at the Pan American Games, you can go watch more table tennis, which is really kind of a fun thing to do. Um, at the Pan American Games, the United States, we kind of dominate in water polo. And so we had, a, a, that's, that's a fun experience just because in, at the Olympics, it's a little more challenging for us to do well. Um, so the success and the winning is always kind of a fun thing. What was it like being a manager in the Olympics? Uh, a lot of work. <laughs> uh, people don't realize the amount of work that has to go in behind the scenes. Uh, making sure that the team's uh, transportations are all lined up, making sure that the food is taken care of, making sure that uh, all of the accommodations uh, the, the in, within the village are taken care of. So there's a ton of work, especially in the preparation to going to one of those events. Uh, but once you're there and you're, you're work, you know, your boots are on the ground and you're working hard, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, again, very special, very much a blessing to be able to be part of all of that. What was it like for you going from obviously being on the U.S. water polo team to obviously getting the opportunity with the Air Force? Um, it different, but being able, one of the ways that Ryan Brown kind of framed it for me and really kind of 
um, it get, got me really excited about it. He asked me if I would come out here and help him mentor the cadets and then um, help mentor him as well. And that was something that's kind of in my wheelhouse. And so I really got excited about that. Um, at the Olympics or on the national team, it's a lot more just kind of work. Um, at the Air Force Academy, it's there's a lot more interaction and knowing that these guys are going off to do something much greater than water polo and helping them to kind of keep that perspective and kind of keep their feet on the ground is is really special and it's a really good challenge at times for them to be able to do that um, but it they they do a fantastic job and it is a tremendously special place to be able to to work and so i can consider myself very blessed to be able to to have this opportunity here what are some of your coaching accomplishments with the Air Force? <laughs> well, I mean, this year is is going off really well. I think we're something like 14 and three. Um, overall, we just had a fantastic weekend. Um, we went three and oh, we beat Santa Clara yesterday, which was a conference game. Um, and so, so far this year has been kind of the biggest accomplishment um, for it all. Um, Outside of the, the X's and O's, just working with the guys and seeing how they develop. And, and uh, you know, now it's been I've seen three classes graduate and this will be the fourth. And just staying in touch with those guys over the years now at this point has been a really neat thing. I've actually had the opportunity of performing the wedding ceremony for two of the cadets. So I think, you know, it's it's much more than just the water polo aspect being here at, at the Air Force Academy. Of course, can you talk about the culture that you have helped build for Air Force water polo? Um, <laughs> trying to keep the perspective that winning and losing isn't everything. Where you go to one of the big five schools, it is everything, right? Um, out here, once they graduate and finish their fourth year of water polo and the fourth year of, of school, they're done with water polo. They go on to their job then at that point to protect our country. And, um, and so helping uh, to build a culture that, um, I mean, it's not necessarily even building the culture, the culture has already existed, it's just enhancing it and helping the guys to understand that they have a, a big job to do beyond water polo. That doesn't mean that water polo and the winning and losing isn't important here, it is, it's very important. But there's this almost tension that has to go back and forth between the winning and losing and helping them to stay on track for their academics and their military as well. What is the typical game day like with Air Force and water polo versus obviously your time with US water polo? Um, it's pretty similar to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a lot of preparation obviously that goes into it. Um, on game day, we, we, help, the, we help the guys um, with their diet, making sure that they eat two, two and a half hours before a competition. Uh, making sure they're having the right food, getting the right amount of sleep. Um, once they show up, um, helping them to get focused on the, the task at hand. Um, I like to tell the guys they're warriors, you know, and, and in many ways they are, but um, helping them to carry over that military cadet kind of mentality into water polo so that they can go into battle really at a water polo match. What is competition like with water polo? Here at the Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. the competition is really tough. Um, we're not going to get the, the top 10 players in the nation um, to play water polo. Those guys have bigger aspirations. You know, they're trying to make the national team. Here, um, these guys are very much focused not only on water polo, but their academics and the military aspect of things, too. So it's, it's a little more challenging uh, to be able to get those, the guys motivated. Um, to, to play the water polo, especially when they have the, the pressures of their academics on them. But these guys, they come here to the Air Force Academy for a reason. And um, when you look at them individually overall, they are definitely uh, probably some of the cream of the crop in the nation, both academically as well as athletically. What, what is the recruitment process like for prospective candidates in Army? I mean, in Air Force. Air Force. <laughs> um, we try to go after some of the biggest names that are that are out there. We we recruit kids from um, the ODP program. We we recruit kids from the youth and junior teams. 
Uh, but like I said, usually those guys, probably 99% of the time, they're heading off to um, Cal or USC, UCLA, Stanford, one of those schools. Um, so, you know, we're, we're always a little bit of a notch down with them, but um, we bring them out here for their official visits. We just had a kid out here um, this past weekend from Newport Beach, California, um, that we're really hoping will make the decision to come here. Um, and, and so we just stay in touch with them. We try to make them feel wanted. We won't sell them a bill of goods um, to come here. We want them to know exactly how hard it's going to be. Um, so we don't pull any punches with them. We let them know that it's going to be tough. Um, but the bottom line is every professor, every PE instructor, including myself, as well as every coach, we want the kids to be successful. So we will do anything and everything that it takes to help them to, to, to gain that level that they want to academically as well as athletically. Of course, can you talk about what the official visit is like for prospective student athletes looking to obviously join Air Force? Yeah, they um, will fly them in. We'll pick them up at uh, Denver International Airport, which is about an hour drive. So they get to see a good part of the um, Colorado driving down here. Um, once they get here, we, um, we tour them around the campus, help them to see some of the, the beauty of it as well as some of the, the neat things that, they be, that they'll get to do. Um, we had a recruit a, a month or so ago. We took him in. They have a satellite lab here. So we took him into the, the lab where the satellites are built. And um, it, it, he just, he, he, it was so attractive to him. I think it was kind of something that he um, would really like to do. Um, We'll show them the different labs. We'll take them around a little bit and show them how um, cadet life is. They'll actually get to spend a night with in, in the dorms with, with one of the water polo cadets. Um, and then they'll get to come down and watch a practice. Um, the coaches will leave and they get to get in with the guys for a little bit, um, kind of shoot a ball around and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then um, this past weekend, the cadet got to see a couple of our games, which was a really special thing. And, um, and then we put them back on the plane and sent them home. What is that feeling like as a coach to see those cadets, those future cadets come into Air Force to see, obviously, is Air Force where I want to be for the next four to lifetime? Uh, it is. It's a lifetime commitment. But the reality is if they come here to the Air Force Academy, um, they get their – they're set up for life. I mean, they – they get a job once they graduate, um, making a you know a good salary, um, you know, and depending on what they do, they've made a commitment to being part of the the service for our country for four to five years or more. Um, and then I I, can't, I don't know of any job out there, any company out there that once they see that they graduated from the Air Force Academy would shy away from hiring somebody like that just because of the fact that. They, they should know anyway, that company should, that they got one of the top educations in the country, that they're dedicated, that they're loyal, that they're willing to serve. Um, so it's a really neat thing to be able to try to project that or try to convey that message to a, an incoming cadet. What advice would you have college, when, college water polo players looking to play in college? Water polo is, is the vehicle that gets you someplace. It's the, the reality is there's such a small percentage of uh, collegiate athletes or even high school athletes going into college that will make the Olympic team or the national team. Um, so I, I, my, my best advice to somebody that was looking to play collegiate water polo, know what the expectation is. You know, kind of set that expectation for yourself and don't let somebody kind of lead you along a little bit and try to get you to come to their school just because you have an opportunity to make the national team. While that might be true, the reality is it's very, very slim chance to be able to make it, um, especially when you start throwing into the mix all the international players that come and play in the United States. I mean, it just really diminishes that opportunity to be able to do that. Also, and not to be disparaging at all against the top five teams or anybody else, um, really consider if you really want to play water polo, there's some great water polo programs on the East Coast, 
Um, there's some really good smaller schools that you can get a really great education and really get your life set up for um, beyond water polo. So, you know, just have that real good expectation and know what it is that you need or want out of water polo. What advice would you give college coaches and even people looking to work on the U.S. national team in coaching? Just keep at it. <laughs> just um, whatever you're doing, just keep at it. And, um, you know, hopefully you get recognized um, somewhere along the line. I was fortunate, you know, to be able to land the position that I did with U.S. Water Polo. Um, and, you know, again, really blessed. It was a, a, a tremendous thing. Um, but, you know, again, just like the athlete, the coaches out there that are aspiring to be able to be on that level, it's really hard. I mean, to kind of get into that situation or break into the national team system. But there's, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. Um, the ODP system, um, all of those things that U.S. Water Polo has set up has been there to develop coaches as well as players. So get involved with that stuff if that's something that you really want to do. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Air Force water polo team? Most of my stuff is just through the U.S. or not through the U.S. water polo, through the Air Force water polo um, uh, social media stuff. So it's the Air Force uh, Twitter account, Instagram account, and Facebook account. Thank you again, Coach Rick, for your interview and best of luck in your future with Air Force. Thank you, Brandon, very much. Have a great day. You too. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Rick, for your interview, and best of luck in your future with Air Force. Thanks, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.